We talked to people who stutter, speech language pathologists, and read the research to know what to do when your child stutters. In this video, we'll talk about stuttering and what you can do for and with your child. Now, I'm a speech language pathologist or SLP, but I'm not your SLP. This is an important message about this video that you should take a moment and read. Let's start off with what is stuttering? People who stutter and the research tells us over and over again that stuttering is more than what you see and hear. We sometimes think of stuttering as repetitions like, wa wa what is stuttering? But stuttering also includes things like tension and complex thoughts and feelings. People who stutter often describe feeling stuck or out of control. Confidently saying what they want to say using forward moving speech is often a goal we work on in speech therapy. We are learning more about what causes stuttering every day. What we know is stuttering is generally caused by an unstable speech motor system. That makes timing and coordination of movements difficult. There are risk factors for ongoing or persistent stuttering. Some facts are helpful when understanding what stuttering is. Let's talk about four important facts. First, stuttering is not caused by anyone and is not something that can be learned. Stuttering is cyclical and changing. This means people who stutter go through times where they stutter a lot and times where their stuttering happens less. You may also notice changes depending on the environment they're in or who they're speaking to. Stuttering is a relapsed prone disorder. That means it's likely to come back if the techniques are not continued or practiced. And finally, age and time are important when thinking about stuttering. Stuttering generally develops between the ages of two and five, and it can be developmental, meaning some children outgrow stuttering when they're preschoolers. One more thing before we get into what you can do is knowing what children who stutter have to say. We asked them, and here's what they said about stuttering. This eighth grader told us, it's just how I talk. I mean, it's nature and it's totally fine. A fifth grade student told us, other students might think that maybe you're not as smart or not as good at reading or something because you stutter, but that's not true. It doesn't have anything to do with how smart you are. One more from a second grader. I'm learning what to do when my words get stuck, and it might take me a bit longer. I wish people wouldn't interrupt or tell me how to talk. Now, what you can do. We have five talking strategies, which are things you can do when talking to your child. These strategies can be used for young children and also young adults. The first is slowing down. Slow down your speech in a way that sounds natural, but makes it clear that you're not in a rush. Listen to me do it. To help slow your speech, try to imagine that someone is trying to write down everything you say. Slowing down shows how to speak in a natural, unrushed way and also allows your child more time to talk and take a turn without rushing. Add a pause at the end of your phrase or sentence pause between different ideas. Be sure to add a few seconds before you respond to something your child says. Did you hear how I just did that? Adding a pause makes it easier for your child to take a turn because it gives them extra time for their muscles to get moving and start their voice. Be a good listener. Be patient by waiting for your child to finish what they have to say. Don't interrupt, speak for them, finish their sentences, or rush them. Try to give them your undivided attention. I know you can't give your full attention to your child every moment that you're together, and that's okay. You can tell them, I really want to hear what you have to say, but I need to finish what I'm doing. Let's talk as soon as I'm done. Good listening includes not asking them to stop and slow down or take a breath. Listen to what they have to say and not how they're saying it. The next is take turns. 
People who stutter find it easier to talk when they're not interrupted. Taking turns is a great way to avoid interrupting each other, and it helps everyone get a turn to talk. As well, taking turns creates extra pauses in the conversation that allow people who stutter time to talk without rushing. To help with taking turns, you can set clear rules like only one person is allowed to talk at a time, or we don't interrupt when someone else is talking. Finally, limit questions. Questions are a natural part of communication, but asking too many questions overall or too many questions in a row can place pressure on the child and their speech system. Instead, try to use comments like, there was a lot going on at school today, rather than, tell me about school today. Always pause after you ask a question and give lots of time to respond. These are five strategies for when you are talking with your child, but there's more you can do. Let's move on to building confidence. We know that stuttering is not caused by being shy or not having confidence, but we also know that people who feel more confident are generally less worried, feel more in control, and are less bothered by stuttering. Let's talk about three ways you can build confidence in your child. The first is giving specific praise. Give praise about all aspects of their life, not just talking, and be specific and clear about your child's strengths or what they're doing well. Think about specific praise like, wow, I really appreciate when you unpack your lunchbox, or I liked how you put the laundry away the first time. Giving praise is a great way to build your child's confidence. Your SLP might have different examples and uses of praise in speech therapy. The next is to accept what your child is saying, not how they're saying it. Remember, what your child has to say is important, even if there are bumps or stutters in their talking. You can help to show them you heard the message by repeating what they said. Finally, you can make it easier for your child to feel confident by reducing pressure. You can reduce pressure by slowing down, being a good listener, and limiting your questions. Your SLP might have other ideas to reduce pressure that are specific to your family, child, and your day-to-day life. We know that doing things to build confidence and using those five talking strategies are not possible all day, every day, but we can plan for special time. Let's talk about that. Special time is a really important thing you can do with your child. I'll explain special time, and your SLP will also be able to guide you. When we say special time, we mean about 5 minutes a day. You could even do 10 or 15 minutes. I know it can be hard to find time, but even 5 minutes can have a big impact on your child. Think about having special time at the same time every day. Build it into your routine, like right before bed. This can make it easier for you to remember and turn it into a habit. Try to get away. Not literally get away, but get away from other people, your phone, the TV, or anything else that would be distracting. Special time is when you're one-on-one with your child and neither of you are distracted. Do what you need to do during special time. Practice adding pauses, taking turns, or giving specific praise. Ask your SLP what you should be doing with your child during special time. We know that special time is really effective for young children, and we also know it's hard to find time and be consistent. Know that it's hard and it can work. If you find your child's stuttering is increasing, come back to your special time plan. That was a lot of information. I hope you have a good idea of what you can do to help your child. You can share this video with important people in your family or your child's life. Please ask your SLP on how to apply this information for your child and what else you can do. Thanks for watching.